a is slightly the double cover of the sphere. So the double these are the two pre-images of the sphere. So if you take uh, the map uh, Z goes to Z square, this gives the double cover of CP1 branch at zero and at infinity, for example. So you can do at any pair of points, and so you can have any distance here between the two the two points. So these are these are different kind of different types. So here the distance between the two points is always pi, but and the angle can be arbitrary. Here the distance between the two points can range between zero and pi, and the angles is always an integer multiple of two pi. So just two examples. Right? And these are the odd examples in Tino's with two control points. So also <coughs> this is uh, one can check that is always obtained by doubling this is twice a diagonal, so if you cut just this frontal side, then you get a, a polygon, a spherical polygon with two edges here and with two edges here. This and this. And you take the double and then you get this surface. <coughs> so this basically the way the cheap and real is also a classification of diagonals. So polygons with two, two edges. Okay, so the next step is the polygons with three edges. So <coughs> Obviously, we all uh, have in mind uh, the situation of spherical triangles embedded in the, uh, in the sphere, like this one, or maybe a complement uh, of it uh, in the hemisphere, like this one. But so these are basically examples, or, or maybe you can take the complement of the whole sphere of this triangle. I mean, if you give the definition of spherical triangle as a disk which has a metric of curvature one inside and the, the boundary is an S1 and is broken into geodesic uh, edges, three geodesic edges. <coughs> but these are not the only cases, so contrary to the flat or hyperbolic world where everything is embedded in the, in the Euclidean plane or in the hyperbolic plane, in this case you can take any of these examples and you can obtain more examples just take this edge and you glue to it a hemisphere. You take a hemisphere, you take a portion of the hemisphere you, which has the same length as the edge and then you glue it to it and then you get something bigger. In this case it will still be embedded in the sphere. You just have added this hemisphere on the left. But then maybe you can add another hemisphere somewhere, then another hemisphere. And then of course the area can grow as much as you want and then there's no way it can be embedded in, in the sphere. So you can have triangles which are as big as you well, with area as big as you want to even with angles as large as you want. So but still it's not clear that whatever triple of angles you give you can get a triangle. So there are constraints. So the first basic problem is for which triple of angles so you can construct a spherical triangle. For example, for in the flat case, you just need the, 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 the sum of the three is pi. In the hyperbolic, you just need the sum of the three is at most pi. Of course, of course Gauss Bonnet implies that you need that the sum of the three angles is at least pi. But that's not the only constraint. So let's call a cartels the set of triples for which a triangle exists. A first uh, <coughs> The first kind of intuition of what happens is the convex case. Convex just means that the angles are smaller than pi. So, what is the constraint? So, a typical convex triangle is, it looks like this, uh, this light blue one, and this is embedded inside a wedge of a spherical wedge, which is contained between two meridians. You can see that the, the constraint is that the air, this blue area, must be smaller than the area of the wedge. So, what is the area, the blue area? The blue area up to a factor of pi is the sum of the angles minus 1. So, this theta, which is the sum minus 1, is up to a factor of pi, is the area. You want this to be positive, but you want it also to be smaller than the area of the wedge. And the area of each wedge is uh, 2 pi theta i. So, basically, this, this inequality on the right, you say that this blue one is smaller than the green one. And this is uh, so necessary, but it's also sufficient because you can construct it by hand. Also this. 
So these are the only constraints in the convex case, and basically, if you're drawing the, the central triples in the Euclidean space, then in the convex case means that you are in the unit cube, and the only ones that correspond to triangles are given by this green simplex. This green simplex has four faces, and these four faces correspond to these four inequalities. Three here, and one inequality here. So this settles the, the convex case. What can have go wrong in the non-convex case? For example, typical degeneration which is not present in the flat or in the hyperbolic world is the following. Start with the triangle and start moving the angles. Say you see that this the angle here is getting bigger than pi. But what can happen at a certain point is that this point crashes onto the opposite edge. And then eventually if you go further, no triangle exists anymore. So of course this can happen only when you have this thing on the right is a wedge. So that this portion on the right is as length pi. So basically this can happen only because you are on the sphere you have conjugate points, which cannot happen in curvature zero or minus one. So basically the, the other constraints will take care of this kind of phenomena. And uh, <clears throat> so if one wants to describe the whole carpet, so the whole set of angles uh, for which triangles exist, this was solved by the Romanico. <coughs> and basically you have this triangle corresponding to the angles, uh, allowed angles in the convex case, and then you just have to reflect this uh, along all faces. So you take the 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 integer lattice in R3, and then you reflect, uh, reflect this, uh, this simplex uh, along all two-dimensional faces, uh, and this is this uh, blue one, like cyan one, is uh, cyan simplex, is the set of uh, angles uh, which correspond to triangles inside this, uh, this other cube. Then there is another cube here, then you take this, uh, this simplex and you reflect it as well. <coughs> so you see that Compared to what you expect, uh, I mean, in the, the only, in the hyperbolic case, you have only one inequality with angles. This gives you basically a, a simplex. Well, not one inequality. You have the three angles are positive, and then the sum is at most pi. Mm -hmm. And this gives you a simplex. Here you have a collection of simplices that are joined through one dimensional spaces. <coughs> so, for what we will care later, we will be interested in uh, triangles with fixed area. This means that the sum of angles uh, is fixed. This means that we are taking this picture, this three-dimensional picture, and then we are taking a slice of this and seeing what happens. So the aspect uh, <coughs> of this uh, carpet with theta fixed, so these are angles corresponding to triangles with a side <coughs> area, is some two-dimensional object and looks like this. So the, the black triangle is just the triples of positive numbers whose sum is extended in theta. Inside this triple, we have this, uh, the carpet, so the ones that correspond to triangles are these uh, this, uh, violet or blue ones. You see that, unfortunately the picture is this small, that here there are some black dots. But these black dots also correspond to triangles. These are triangles in which one of such thetas is integral. So, sorry, you're pretty upset, so I, I'm trying to understand the picture. Can you just explain, just once again, what exactly we're, we're, we're so I this, uh, the, we are thinking that the three dimensional picture, then we slice with <coughs> the equation uh, theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 equal to theta. Right, so right. it's a plane. So, so, yeah, so and, and we get, uh, when, the, when we slice the octant, we get the triangle with the black boundary. When we slice the simplices, we get this, uh, this, oh, uh, these uh, blue ones are the, the slice simplices. No, I understand. So I'm also highlighting where there is, uh, for which uh, triples uh, with one, I mean this, you see here, this, these triangles are meant to be open triangles, so there are no boundaries. But sometimes there is a point in the corner of the triangle. This black point uh, is uh, highlighting the fact that, uh, that this is an integral point, and here we do have triangles. 
and some other in some other corners of the web, we don't have these points. So uh, I will show you what these points correspond to. So this carpet uh, is a union, as I said, of all my triangles where no no theta is integral, and some black dots where one theta is integral. So maybe. This was, this is the, the carpet, so the allowed uh, angle, triple superangles, but this is not exactly the space of triangles. The distinction is in the following. So if we have a triangle, we can assign to it the triples of, an, of angles. And in general, this map is one to one. So for every triple, there is exactly one triangle. This is exactly what happens over these triangles. So where no, there is no integral angle, there is exactly one triangle or none if you're in the white zone. But of the black dots where one coordinate is integral, there is not just one triangle, but there is a whole segment of triangles. I will show you an example. So take a, a wedge. So take a wedge uh, north south pole and there lies uh, two meridians. You take the wedge between them. This is a diagonal. But if you mark a point on the meridian, then this becomes a triangle. Just that the angle when you mark the point is pi here. So this has angle theta 1, theta 2 equal to theta 1, and then this has angle pi. So th the integral angle is here. Now, with these angles, the triangle is not unique because you can move this point, you can slide this point along all these meridians. So basically, you have a whole segment, an open segment of triangles. And these are distinct because the distance from one vertex to the other is different. Maybe. So this means that over these black dots we have a whole open segment of triangles. So this, the fiber here sometimes over the black dots is an open segment. So how does this space of triangles look like? No, it almost looks like this, but on the black dots there is a blow up. So the blow up here is the carpet with this black dot. Actually, the shape of the space of triangles is a, a bl real blow up, but the gluing is not the obvious one. It is, it's gluing like in the projective space. So we're gluing this with this in the other direction. And uh, so looking at this, if you, do, if you perform all these blocks, you get a surface. So in fact, the space of triangles, space of triangles is a surface. Non connected in general, but a surface, even an oriented surface. There are other ways to prove this, but we will need the carpet to, to, do, to perform some computations. So, this is the aspect of the space of triangles or the carpet when the theta, so the area, is uh, not an odd integer. Because when it's uh, an odd integer, something different happens that the the carpet, the allowed angles, are only consisting of those dots. So there are the, if you, I don't have the animation, but if you move the angle and you, you move theta, the area, and you send it to a, to a not one, then you see these triangles that shrink, 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 <laughs> and then they tear off, tear apart, and then you get only these, these points. I'll show you, so there are a certain number, a finite number of uh, integral points, and I'll show you now an example of triangles with such area. So this is a basic example, take a hemisphere, take the boundary of the hemisphere, and then you break it into three uh, segments. So length A, B, and C, such that the sum of the three lengths is 2 pi. And this is a spherical triangle, according to our definitions, and the angles are pi, pi, pi. So the angles are always the same, but these three, three lengths can move in an open two segment, the two simplex. So basically, the, the angles, there is a possibility for each of these, but com when the angles are fixed, there is this two simplex of triangles that, that are the fiber of this, uh, of this map. So this is also a surface, but it's disconnected now into a number of two surfaces. Okay, so once we have completely understood the space of triangles, we can switch to the problem, which is understanding tori with one conical point. So this, uh, with the note by MS11 theta, the model and space of spherical surfaces, which have genus one, one conical point, and uh, 
the amplitude of this quadrilateral point is 2 pi e theta. And theta must be clearly, by Gauss's name, must be greater than 1. Otherwise, there is no room for the for the purpose. So the one problem, well, there are many problems, but one problem is basically first begin to understand the topology of this space. Second problem is beginning to understand the topology of this map that sends a spherical surface to underlying regular surface. Basically, looking at the fibers of this answers uh, the question uh, how many uh, spherical metrics with a sign uh, angle at the point so you have in each conformal class. This is a problem that has been studied for a long time by people in analysis. You know, since, I don't know, 70s, probably the 60s. Even. But uh, the, there are reasons, uh, I mean, these are the more general problems, of course, they assign parameter functions and they try to solve uh, semi linear elliptic equations. But uh, so we are in a simpler case when the curvature is constant. <coughs> but still, analysts have found several results about the existence of bounded number of solutions. So we are approaching things in, geometric, in a geometric way. So there are about this forgetful map. This is not something strange. Now it gets interesting only in this spherical case, but basically we have already seen it uh, and we use it implicitly. For example, in the in the even without quantum points in the hyperbolic world, when the genus is at least two, we always use the uniformization theorem that gives us a, a bijection, a homeomorphism between the space of uh, hyperbolic metrics and the space of uh, complex structures. So, or um, in the genus one case between the space of uh, modular space of complex story and modular space of flat story, but. This was uh, pushed further, still in the hyperbolic or flat case, even with conical points. So if gauss bonnet constraints are satisfied, you can still have cost uh, medical cost of curvature zero or minus one in each conformal class. So it's uh, results by Heinz, uh, at least 62, then by other people, by Kolo and Koryanov, that once you fix the angles and uh, then each conformal class and the angle satisfied the gauss bonnet constraint for having a flat surface or for having a hyperbolic surface, then there is exactly one metric in each conformal class. Of course, in the flat case, it's one metric up to rescale, but it's one metric. So in the spherical case, this is no longer the case. So this uniqueness fails, but even existed in the other one fails. Basically, exists, uh, the uniqueness here depends at least analytically, on some the fact that you can use maximum principle here, and you cannot use because the sign of the curvature is positive here. So this means existence uh, is uh, obtained in a variational way. This is all in the, in the paper by Yano, <coughs> <Yama>, the <coughs> more general problem the sending curvature. So he also showed that even in the spherical case, we still have existence uh, in a certain range. When the angles satisfy some inequality, which has a geometric meaning, but I don't want to discuss it. So, in some cases, you get the but in general, in the spherical case, you don't have existence, you don't have limits. So, what are our statements? We collect two of them. One is uh, for general angles, in the case of Torres, so when the angle is not odd, which is the strange case. We're showing that the, this modular space is. Uh, a connected orientable surface, and it's an orbital actually. And so we can understand the genus, so there is a formula for the genus, the number of punctures, so basically we know all the topology, we know also the orbital doida characteristic, and also the orbital points. So we know that there exists an orbital point over the six, if and only if theta is. This is the distance of theta, of theta between, between theta and the integers multiple of 6 is greater than 1, with just some numerical thing, and the same for orbital point over the 4. We will see in the, in the picture when this happens or when it doesn't. This is just codification. All the other points are more people to do. And also, the forgetful map is proper as the degree M. It is still an open problem whether, in general, in this case is known, but in general, for any genus, the forgetful map is as finite finite. This is in general not known. 
but in the case of Torah, it is the Sorry, you're very just to make sure I understand. So the end markers, so those are also the those are this that's the not that's the number of overflow points or no no no, 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 no. the number There's of cusps. The, so those are cusps and then so you it's a it's a big, a it's a non compact surface. Yeah. Topologically it is uh, yeah, a surface of, of this genus with no, n no, points no, removed. No, and then orbital points on Yeah, orbital points are blue, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so orbital points, they are all of order two, except sometimes there might be one of order six, sometimes there might be one of order four, sometimes there can be both or none. Okay. Okay. So we will see it uh, now. Okay, let's let, let me show you also how to reduce the, the classification of spherical toroid to the classification of triangles. So that's why I insist on triangles, because then you will be, the, the classification will be done using the space of triangles. So, um, okay, so let's take G and N1, so now with the case of the torus with one particle point, theta is not odd. <coughs> In this case, we know that complex story and an evolution, right, they are a group, so you can send uh, a point to minus itself once you, I mean, the, the, the fixed point, the x point will play the role of the neutral element of the group and then you can, uh, the inversion gives you uh, an evolution, a polymorphic evolution. Of mm -hmm. The interesting thing in this case is that uh, if theta is not odd, even the spherical metrics we have here are invariant under this evolution. So this is, uh, you look at the device and everybody when you play with it. So this, simply, this is the key thing that simplifies, because then you can portion this metric surfaces by the evolutionary reduced to spherical. <coughs> so yeah, the spherical, the spherical torus is sigma invariant. So the consequence is that you can obtain the torus by doing two congruent triangles. This is, uh, we will see, even in the flat case, it is very familiar, but the, the interesting fact is that we don't want just to do any two triangles, but we will choose some special triangles, which we will call balanced triangles. So, balanced triangle is just a triangle in which the angles satisfy the triangle in the So they're triangles that are not too skewed. Sorry, sorry. This involves your pixels also on the points, right? Yeah, the evolution pixel, which is the. Oh, it's about two, say. Yeah, yeah. So the. Not just one, maybe. Not, not just the only Yeah, yeah if it's the only yeah. other three points. Uh -huh. okay. Okay. Yeah. So let's go for a moment to have inspiration back to the flat case. So this is not the case very interesting, but what happens with flat toray? So in flat toray, how do we produce a balanced triangle from the flat torus? Because when we start with the flat torus, which is C modulo lattice, we only see, if we go to the universal cover, we see the complex plane and we see this lattice here. And of course, uh, we can draw fundamental domains, uh, which are parallelograms, <coughs> but we can draw many of them. And we want somehow a privileged one, which is uh, obtained by doing two balanced triangles. So how to select a privileged fundamental domain? We just take the border graph. So this red thing, is the locus of points which are equidistant from at least two points in the lattice. So we take this graph and dually to each, so the edges of this graph correspond to points which are equidistant from exactly two points in the lattice. Vertices are points in the left in the graph which are equidistant from at least three, three vertices. Here it has balance three, so it is equidistant from exactly three vertices. And so dually to each edge, there is exactly one edge that joins, one segment that joins two vertices. And this is the way we construct our privileged triangles. So usually the situation is this one. This is the fundamental domain, and you see that this is obtained by doing two congruent triangles. And these triangles, if you construct them this way, these are balanced. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, these are usually strongly balanced, means that the inequality is, uh, triangle inequality is uh, verified <coughs> strictly. Sometimes it's uh, weakly verified, and it's the case when it's a rectangle. In this case, there are two possibilities. There is a sort of symmetry given by reflection. <coughs> so in the spherical case, we do exactly the same. 
So we start with, okay, this is, imagine this is a spherical torus with one conical point here. We take the red thing, which is the, the locus of points which have at least two ways, two shortest ways to get to the conical point. And we get, in general, this, uh, this graph, which has two, two, vertices of, two vertices of balance three. And if we cut along the red graph, well, we get some picture like this one. And uh, this one, you, you can see that you can reconstruct exactly two congruent triangles. Here it is not that visible, but here is a bit more visible. This is the special case in which the, the graph has only one, one vertex of balance four. And in this case, uh, dually to this graph, uh, we have only two edges. And this is the semi-balance case. In this case, if we want really triangles, we have to add either this diagonal or this diagonal, meaning that here we have to add another, another uh, edge. And we can do it in two ways. Exactly like in the flat case, we could have the same rectangular one being associated to, to do two triangles, which are related by reflection. So usually this decomposition into two congruent triangles is unique in its case. In this semi-balanced case, it's not unique. But the two triangles are related by a reflection, orientation reverse reflection. So where are the triangles on the left? Sorry, I just I'm on the left, sir? Yeah. <laughs> so on the left, so one triangle is obtained, so you uh, have the red one, one, the one the, Yeah, so yeah. let's go back to the flats. So how do we get the flat picture? Once you have the red one, we take the blue mm -hmm. one, which is uh, orthogonal to the red one running in the middle of it. So here we do the same. We, let's open it first to see it better. So cut along the red one. Then you take a blue one transverse to each red one. This is these blue ones. And then uh, the light blue ones for one triangle and the light the other ones from the other triangle. Thanks. Okay, so okay, this is a bit bigger. This, so we have reduced the problem from uh, from uh, tori to balanced triangles now. <coughs> okay, this I said what I said before. This the strictly balance is this case is the weekly balance case. Okay, so before we discuss the space of spherical triangles with assigned assigned area, I was discussing the space of balance triangles with assigned area. This is almost the same. So uh, maybe let me see if I have a bigger picture. Yeah. So this was, you remember, this, the, this blue ones were making the space of uh, the characters. The, now, if we had the condition, the balance condition, here, here is a bit too light, so, but this is an inequality that theta 1 must be smaller than theta 2 plus theta 3. So it's a highlighting a, a region here, which I don't know if you can see. Hmm. Those are really the midpoints, right, the, of the three sides. Sorry? Those are really the, the vertices are really the midpoints of the other one. The ver which vertices? The vertices These the ones, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. You take the three midpoints of these triangles and then you join them. Right? Yeah. Okay. So the the balanced triangles, strictly balanced, are inside this. The weekly balance are on this boundary here, which you must be on the on the carpet, but you must be on the boundary of these lights. Uh, Triangle. So basically, the space of balanced triangles is a surface, but it has boundaries. So how do we get? Okay, let's let's go back here. So the space of balanced triangles is a connected surface with boundary. Now the fact that it's connected, that you have to analyze these vertices, but you see that there are all the vertices inside the balance area are present. So this is a bit connected, also oriented. How do we get uh, a torus uh, out of it? We have, once we have one such triangle, we take two copies uh, and then we glue to each other. And uh, basically, once we glue to each other, we forget uh, here, you know, to have, this, uh, to have this picture, we have to label the, the vertices uh, or the edges uh, because we have three coordinates. So we have to forget the labeling of the edges. And if we want to keep the orientation, we just have just are free to rotate the three coordinates. So basically, we, 
we are working up to rotation of, of the coordinates, but also we are working uh, up to um, up to so for the interior points, the strictly balanced, the only the only uh, thing that we have fixed is just the labeling. So we just take the interior and just per, uh, cyclically renumber the edges. So we have a Z3 action in the interior. On the boundary, we still have the relabeling, but we also have the fact that we could have chosen one triangle of the reflected one. So this extra reflection gives us an identification of each edge to itself given by folding. So you take the whole edge and you fold it this way. So basically you may create a horrible point in the middle of this edge. So, okay. Oh, uh -huh. you know what is, okay. These are some pictures of some carpets with different values. Okay, it's not clearly visible, but I don't know if anyone can see some colors. So sometimes you can have the point in the center of the triangle, sometimes it belongs to the carpet. When, here it doesn't, for example, but in the other case it does. When it does, this point is always fixed by the Zermatt involution. So in this case, it would get the, the point of order 6. Also, on the boundary of the balanced carpets, uh, there are these midpoints uh, that sometimes they do belong to the carpet. Here they don't, uh, but here they do. There is this green point. When they do the folding, creates an orbital point of order 4. Otherwise, all the other points have orbital order 2, because, uh, because every metric has this, uh, is invariant under this, uh, uh, this uh, conformal automorphism. So basically, that's it. After this picture, you are able to go to the topological invariants. So let me see if I have time to, maybe not, but uh, this is very quick. So what happens in the odd case? In the odd case, uh, remember the carpet is this one, we do exactly the same. We compute the balanced carpet, which is just a subset of this carpet, and uh, we do the same identifications. Now there are no semi balanced things, so there are only the Zemo tree identification, and we get again a certain number of connected components. Sometimes there is one component in the center, which has an extra point of automorphism, otherwise, all the other points are just. Uh, the, remember the triangles were two synthesis, the two synthesis with the trivial Zermo 2 action of evolution. So basically, we get a certain number of connected components and uh, we're able to, to count them. And uh, when there is a point in the center, there is, a, there is a one component which is uh, the two simplex mods the Zermo 3 uh, cyclic. Um, cyclic uh, uh, permutation of the coordinates which gives uh, an x uh, a point, an orbital point in the center. So this is a special. And this is the description. So uh, just the last word. In general, when we do the same in the odd case, I didn't say that all the metrics in the odd case are invariant under the evolution. And the truth is they are not. So the, the construction I showed you before only allows to construct the metrics which are invariant under this evolution. But uh, there are other metrics, uh, and I'll show you in this picture. So how you construct these metrics? Remember that uh, I showed you a model of triangle, which was this hemisphere with the equator cut into three pieces. So in that case, how do we get a torus? We take the whole sphere, we cut a slit here of length a plus b, and then we break the two shores of the slit into a plus b or b plus a, and then we have made a quadrilateral with four edges, a, b, a, b. And then we identify in the usual way to get a torus, and this would be a spherical torus with a point of angle 6 pi. And you see that in this case the involution is just the reflection about the equator, so this will give uh, a metric which is invariant. But here you can see that if you pick the axis orthogonal to that equator, you can, uh, using the projective transformation, you can sub this equator toward one pole or toward the other pole. When you do this, you still get 
different metrics, because these are not isometries of the sphere, which are conformal equivalents, but they are no longer invariant under the involution. So in this case, if you're looking for the ones which are not invariant, are an extra r, an extra dimension. So in this case, the space will be three-dimensional. But still, the structure is the same. The disconnected components are very easy to figure out uh, how things go. OK, let's stop here. Thank you. Ah, okay, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't speak about that. So, so uh, you mean uh, why, okay, so the, the map um, itself is not easy to visualize. Uh, the reason is that, uh, in general, uh, this is a real analytic map, uh, and uh, it has holes, you know. So, in general, and uh, in general, for example, in this case, uh, it has almost always holes. The case where it doesn't, uh, there is one case which is easier to understand. I didn't have time to speak about it. It is when theta is even. So it's still in this general case, but it's even. In this case, something special happens. And the special thing is that the monodromy of this, uh, of this spherical surface is fixed. So in this case, the, uh, the moduli space has a natural complex structure, which in general doesn't. As a, as a natural complex structure and the that makes the forgetful map holomorphic. Mm -hmm. So the map is really a holomorphic cover, a finite cover, and in this case you can compute the degree. You can, you can visualize. If you want to see uh, basically how, how it goes, so you see this surface, uh, the, sur the surface of triangles, if you look at these vertical lines here, these vertical lines at the bottom of the triangles, this correspond <coughs> to ends. Right? Because is, there is no boundary, right? So every vertical, the horizontal ones also correspond to ends, but with z one three they are identified one to the other. So you have the vertical ones, the horizontal ones, and the diagonal ones. Pick one, pick just the vertical ones. You get the ends, which is this one end, and this is the second end. So in this case, there are two, only two ends in this, in this modular space. And, uh, uh, and these ends are, are essentially the ones that so you can you can uh, well you can see that these are the ones that are that are mapped into infinity so you can compute the degree just looking at what map maps on the territory or you, you can do it other ways but looking at the the fact is that when theta ranges between these uh, two two values the map is uh, is pro is uniformly proper so the degree is always the same. Even though it starts folding, it starts doing things. So it's enough to compute it when theta is even. In this case, you can use algebraic geometry because it's more explicit description as a word with space and you can compute it better. But I didn't discuss it. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you, if you fix one of these structures, let's say we're in the case where you have a balanced uh, circle triangle, so you get the, you have these triples of, of arcs that correspond to the triangles. But you can realize geometrically other ones, right, that are not balanced. Uh, sorry, are you in the odd case? No, 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 no. I, I, I'm, in a, I'm in a place where you have a, a, just the even case, or one of these cases here. The, the, so, yeah. so you have this triple of arcs that realize the balanced triangle, but you have other triangles as well that you can realize, right? Did, did you see that in the same? Uh, uh, no. Okay. So if, if, if you have a hyperbolic you know, metric or a flat yeah. metric, then any triple of, of arcs, you can realize them geometrically by geodesics. Right? But in this case, you won't. I mean, certain ones. Will but you mean, uh, if you say the, the length of no, the I mean, so think of the homotopy class of the three arcs that, that leave from the that leave from your, your your special point. Yeah. Right. So you can realize them as uh, as as geometric arcs. Yeah. But some of them you won't be able to realize. Right. Yeah. yeah that's correct. Do you have any idea of which ones you can and which ones you can't? I mean, in some sense, this gives you a map to the to the fairy dust. Mm -hmm. Like the arcs correspond to. Uh, well, in this case, of the terms, if you're just looking at uh, uh, arcs that start and end at yeah. the polygon points, uh, you can. Um, I think you can always realize them. The fact is that sometimes you can only realize them uniquely. 
So this is a problem. Because uh, you, you, can, you take a, a homotopy class, yeah. and then you minimize it, right. the length. And then uh, the only thing that can go wrong in a spherical yeah. world is that <laughs> this, uh, uh, this uh, in the minimization process, this, this arc gets stumbles into a quadrilateral point. Right, yeah, yeah. In this case, uh, um, so, so, so so what I mean by realize is really that you want that to the, the shortest one does not get stuck in the Oh, ah, okay, 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 no, this is exactly right, right. Yeah, okay. No, okay. Of course, this is this is so you can, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this you can, okay. but yeah, no, uh, I don't know exactly if that's okay. correct. Okay. So, so when you have a um, problem of a map from the torus or any given surface of any huge then in this sphere, that gives you one of these spherical metric singularities yeah. of the ramification points uh, in a broader way, I would say. So, uh, are these special in, in these modular spaces? Yeah, so the, this was studied uh, through. Okay, so these are special uh, because this corresponds to surfaces which have 3 d monodromes. Monodromes. So once you have a spherical thing, then uh, the spherical structure is locally homogeneous, so this gives you a monodromic representation from the fundamental group of the functions here to, S, to SO3. Let's say. But uh, <laughs> I destroyed it. Okay. No problem. No problem. <laughs> but uh, uh, you have to pay for it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but the, when the when the map, so in general, when the map is to P1, then the monodromy is trivial. It's a trivial representation. That's the case when you have the map, the, the branch color. So this was studied in algebraic geometry. Uh, in Gina Zero, at least, it was studied uh, by, I mean, uh, Osterman and Liu, I think they showed that this, this modular space is connected. And uh, in general, uh, it is. Uh, it was known in Gina Zero, I think, by Harris, uh, Eisenberg Harris, that also uh, in every conformal class there are exactly finitely many classes of such up to projective, projective mm -hmm. transformations. But and it was to not told, said, and it's folklore that in general there are finitely many such in each conformal class, even though mm. no proof, uh, I could find no proof in the literature, no, I couldn't prove it yet myself. So there, there are some, there are more linked to algebraic geometry because there are more tools in this case, yeah. right? And uh, mm -hmm. this, uh, when, when we are not in that case, it's harder because uh, you have a developing <coughs> map, but this developing map is just at the level of universal color, it's not just a map from the compact surface. Mm -hmm. so, but of course, they have a, a sort of a dual, I mean, one starts to work with it, it's not so easy. It's not like the orbit's case in which you fix the points in CP1 and the pattern of the ramification, and then you want to see what, uh, what surface you get. Mm -hmm. Because here you start with the surface on top, you fix yeah. the points in the source, and then you look for maps that that's that, that ramification given. And the problem is different. Yeah, no proof of space. So we, we do, yeah, it's not proof of space. We do have it, it's clear that, mm -hmm. that there are friendly men in which a possibility yeah, yeah. is a combinatorial thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in this case is not clear at all. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.